Recently, a new user sent me a uh, question whether SimSmith could be used to figure out a problem that he was having with his circuit. This is a circuit. It's a reference design from Nordic. It's a Bluetooth adapter. Uh, it's got a little Pi network here for matching purposes. It's got this kind of interesting Balin sort of thing here. And this works pretty well, but the layout guy, not knowing, I guess, what he was doing or miscalculating what he was doing, put in a couple of 70 ohm transmission lines right through here. And those were apparently uh, matching up the, goofing up the match. So I figured I'd take a look at this using SimSmith and see if I could model it and maybe learn a few things. So let's bring up SimSmith. Now remember that this circuit it goes left to right and SimSmith goes right to left, so it's going to look a little reversed here. But this is the Nordic reference design, and you'll see right off the bat that the goal, according to the reference design, is to get to 85 or get to 15 ohms plus 85J. Uh, we're not near there. So the first thing we're going to do with SimSmith is get this circuit tuned to be over here. Now the way I'm going to tune it the way I'm going to tune it is I'm going to actually put in all these components and vary their values. So I'm going to turn off the frequency sweep and I'm going to turn on variation in all these components, and you can see it's, it's pretty centered around there. I'm going to go and make the variation much larger. And now you'll see we're kind of all over the map. And what I want to do is adjust these component values so that I get over here. Now I'm going to pick one. It's not necessarily the best one, but I'm going to pick one simply by right-clicking on it. And you'll see that SimSmith has gone and adjusted all these values. And if that's not close enough, you'll notice each time I click this, it changes these values, which means the variation changes as well. So now I get a different set of points. I can click on this one. That I could click on this one. And if I do this enough times, I'm going to get close enough to what I want. Here are the component values that SimSmith has figured out how to make it land at 15 plus J85. Let's uh, set down the variation to be a normal 10%, which is 1.2. And you can see it's pretty well grouped. Now, it's unfortunate that we're over here on the Smith chart because this is really not where we tend to to work partly because the resolution of this is really bad. Now there's a hidden feature in SimSmith that lets me move this point down to the origin. Now when I do that, that means that the Smith chart is not really a gamma of one with a circle around it. It, it, it really can confuse you. So when you do this, you want to be aware of what you're doing and realize that your normal intuitions about the Smith chart may not may not be right. This particular feature is invoked in a hidden way by giving the generator two parameters called SWRR, SWR, oh, excuse me, ZOI, and that sets the imaginary part of Z0. So let's go up here. We'll set Z0 to be 15 ohms and the imaginary part to be 85. Now if I zoom out, we'll see that the circle of our Smith chart, our working region, is right around here. Now, the other thing we want to do is move our SWR circle to be around this point. And that can be done in a similar way by adding SWRR, which is what I tried to do earlier. SWRI. Again, two more hidden parameters. 
in here I'm going to set this to be 15 and this to be 85 and now our SWR circle is being plotted around in the impedance that we want to see. You can look here here's the real impedance here in red the blue down here is imaginary. It gets a little messed up and I could clean that up but we don't use this very often. Now I can go back turn off component variation and go back to just a simple trace. You can see across the 2.3 to 2.5 that's a pretty solid match. And If I go down here you'll see that it's also a pretty solid match. Now one of the things I'm going to want to do is, is figure out how bad that pair of transmission lines screwed me up. So I'm going to do I'm going to adjust my power level here using the impedance inside here which is supposed to be 15 minus 85 and we're going to set the power level C. Let's take a quick look at here. We got 15 the inside of this would be minus 85 because it's the conjugate of what they wanted up there. And power we're going to set to be something like 0.5 and then I'm going to adjust it. So now I want to play with the power level so that my voltage and impedance have been set so that it's going to deliver 1 watt to the load or 0 dB. Now it's not really doing that. This is all relative. I could have set it to 10 dBm, but I'm going to set it here for the time being. That's close enough. So now the question is what happens when you turn on this transmission line? Now right now it's set to be zero. Here let's look at this again. It's length in centimeters with Z0 and a velocity factor. Velocity factor in printed circuit boards is about 6. Again, we're just trying to get a handle on what's going on. Let's set this to be 1.5 centimeters, which is the length that the layout guy put in there. As you can see, the instant we do that, delivered power dropped by, uh, looks like 24 dB, and the match is completely off the scale. We're not anywhere near. We could go look at it without it being re realigned, but it's really not worth it. Let's take a quick look at what will happen. Um, well, okay. First of all, we see that it's down horribly. Um, we would like to know now, we know that this etch is bad. Um, if he had, for example, put it over here, we would find that, oh, you know, that's not, it, it's not good, but it's not horrible. Um, we could have uh, adjusted things a little bit if he had put the matching circuit near the chip, but he didn't do that, so we'll put this back over here. Now, we hate to relay out boards. Uh, maybe there's something we could do with these component values. After all, here's this nifty Pi network. Certainly, we could be using that to do a match kind of a post compensation idea. And to do that we want to go back and tune these parameters and we're going to tune them the same way we did before. We're going to come up here and say we're going to put up with a th times three variation and we're going to turn on scanning of all the component values. And we're still well off of the charts. See, we got one right here. So we're going to click on that. And that gives us variation around a new set of components again. So we're going to click this one again. Getting close, maybe this one. And there we have a 
uh, match. We've readjusted all these component values so that the resulting circuit, including this layout etch, has given us a reasonable match. Let's see what happens if we do manufacturing variation of 10%. We'll see that this circuit, while we may get a match at one particular value, would be awful from a manufacturing perspective. And it's interesting, you can go back here and take a look and see which components cause you big trouble. For example, L2 variation, we'll see it down here, doesn't seem to have much trouble. Uh, the, yeah, L1 is a little worse. This one is particularly bad. C4F right here, this capacitor is really critical. Not quite so critical, not at all critical. So it would be this capacitor and this inductor, that pair, right? Now, let's take a look and see what's going on with the load here. We can see that uh, at the tuned part, we're getting a uh, pretty good power out of it, almost what we started with. So it's reasonably efficient. But what we don't like is here's the SWR plot. Um, and so not surprisingly, the SWR is pretty narrow. It's a very peaky design, uh, predominantly because we had to we had to peek this out to compensate for these two, this transmission line. Of course, we could do a fun thing and just make this transmission line longer make it half a wavelength, for example, and you would go through the same process that I just went through, and it would give you an idea about what kind of SWR and component values you might need. So, there you have it, a quick example of some of the hidden features of SimSmith and a few things that you can use to, to tune circuits. In particular, you do a wide variation, right-click on one of the points, it reassigns all the component values, gives you a new set from which to, to choose, and away you go. There you go. Hope that was interesting. Give it a try. Talk to you later. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY, and thanks for watching.